chapter 10. Dad's behind, beside me, holding the flashlight up to Shiloh's eyes. Shiloh's still alive. This is Judd Travers' dog. I sit back on my heels and nod, wipe one arm across my face. Dad looks around. Take those gunny sacks over there and put them in the back of the Jeep, he says. And Then, still holding the flashlight in one hand, he slips his arm under Shiloh and picks him up. I can see Shiloh wince and pull back on his leg where it hurts. The tears are spilling out of my eyes, but Dad can't see him in the dark. You can probably tell I'm crying, though, because my nose is clogged. Dad, I say, please don't take him back to Judd. Judd will take one look at Shiloh and shoot him. Take those gunny sacks to the Jeep like I said, Dad tells me, and I follow behind as we go down the hill. I keep my mouth open to let the breath escape, crying without making a sound, just like Shiloh. I'm always watching from inside, the screen all covered with June bugs where they've been buzzing about the light. There Lynn's up, standing there in her nightshirt watching. What is it? What's he got, Darylin says, pestering Ma's arm. A dog, says Ma. Then she calls out, Ray, is it alive? Just barely, says Dad. I put the gunny sacks in the Jeep, and Dad carefully lays Shiloh down without waiting to ask. I crawl into the Jeep beside Shiloh, and Dad don't say no. He goes in the house for his trousers and his keys, and then we're off. I'm sorry, Shiloh, I whisper over and over, both hands on him so he won't try to get up. The blood's just pouring from that rip in his ear. Now, I'm so sorry, Jesus, help me, I don't, I didn't know Baker's dog could leap that fence. When we get to the bottom of the lane, instead of going up the road toward Judd's place, Dad turns left toward Friendly. And halfway around the first curve, he pulls up in Doc Murphy's driveway. Light's still on in the window, but I think old Doc was in bed because when he come to the door, he's in his pajamas. Ray Preston, he says when he sees Dad. Sure, I'm sorry to bother you at this hour of the night, Dad says, but I got a dog here hurt bad, and if you could take a look at him, see if he can be saved, we'd be much obliged. We'll pay. I'm not a vet, says Doc Murphy, but he's already standing aside, holding the screen open with one hand so we can carry Shiloh in. Doc's a short man, round belly, don't seem to practice what he preaches about eating right, but he's got a kind heart, and he lays out some newspapers on the kitchen table. I'm shaking so hard I can see my own hands tremble as I keep one on Shiloh's head, the other on a front paw. He's sure bleeding good, I can tell you that, Doc Murphy says. He puts on his stethoscope and listens to Shiloh's heart. Then he takes his flashlight and shines it in the dog's eyes, holding each eye open with his finger and his thumb. Finally, he looks at that big, ugly wound on Shiloh's hurt leg. Torn open right to the bone. That bites around Shiloh's neck and the ripped ear. I turn my head away and sniffle some more. I'll do what I can, Doc says. Thing is, we got to worry about now is infection. That leg wound is going to take 20, 30 stitches. What happened? I figure Dad will answer for me, but he don't. He just turns to me. Marty? I swallow. Big old German shepherd shoot him up. Doc Murphy goes over to the sink and washes his hands. Baker's dog? Every time that shepherd gets loose, there's trouble. He comes back to the table and takes a big needle out of his bag, fills it full of something. Something to make Shadow numb, maybe. This your dog, son? I shake my head. No. He looks at me, and then Dad. Dad still won't say nothing. Makes me do the talking. While the doc leans over shallow and slowly inserts the needle into his side, I get up the nerve. It's Judd Travers, I tell him. I gotta start practicing the truth sometime. Judd Travers? That's the dog he's missing? How come you brought it in? I had him, I say. Doc Murphy sucks his breath and lets it out a little at a time. Hmm, hmm, hmm he says, and goes about his work. Don't know how long we're there in Doc's kitchen. Dad's standing over against the wall, arms folded, me with my hands cupped over Shadow's head while Doc Murphy washes the wounds and dresses them and starts stitching the skin back up. 
Once or twice I feel a shallow jerk, like it hurts him. But when he lays too still, I don't know if it's because he's numb or if he's dying. Next 24 hours we'll know if he's going to live, Doc says. You check with me tomorrow evening. We'll have some idea then. I can keep him here for a day or two, Ray. Then if he makes it, you can take him on home. I put my face down near Shiloh's again, my mouth next to his ear. Live, Shiloh, live, I whisper. Hardest thing in the world is to leave Shiloh there at Doc Murphy's. The way his eyes follow me over the doorway, the way his muscles move, like he's trying to get up when he sees me leaving. Second hardest thing is to crawl in the Jeep with Dad afterwards. There isn't a word passed between us till we get home. Once Dad turns the motor off, though, and I'm all set to get out, he says, Marty, what else don't I know? What? I asked. You keeping Judd's dog up there on the hill? Got a place for him all built, never letting on? What else you keeping from me? Well, nothing, Dad. How do I know that's not another lie? Because it's not. You saying so don't make it true. I know then what Ma meant. But it's not all so black and white as Dad makes it out to be, neither. And sometimes when I get mad, it clears my head. You would have thought more of me if I'd let that dog wander around till Judd found it again, kick the daylights out of him, I ask. That what you want me to do, Dad? I want you to do what's right. And what's right? For once in my 11 years, I think I have my dad stumped. Lest ways it seems to be 30, 40 seconds before answers. You got to go by the law. The law says a man that pays money for a dog owns that dog. You don't agree with the law, then you work to change it. What if there wasn't time, Dad? Shiloh could be dead by the time somebody looked into the way Judd treats dogs. Dad's voice is sharp. You think Judd Travers is the only one around here hard-hearted toward his animals? You think he's the only one who starves them or kicks them or worse? Open up your eyes, Marty. Open your eyes. Now Dad half turns in his seat, back resting against the door facing me. How many times have you walked to the school bus and seen a chained-up dog in somebody's yard? How many times have you ever put your mind to whether or not it's happy? It's ribs sticking out like handles on the sides. Suddenly you're face to face with a dog that pulls at your heart and all at once you want to change things. I swallow. There's got to be a first time, I answer. Dad sighs. <sighs> you're right about that, he says. I'm pushing my luck, I know. If Doc Murphy don't tell Judd about Shiloh... Can we bring him back here and, and keep him? I could build him a better pen, make him a fence high enough so that shepherd can't get in. Dad opens the jeep door on his side. No, he says and gets out. I get out too. Just till Shiloh's better then. You know how Judd treats anything that don't work right. He'll shoot Shiloh, Dad. I found a dog once before over near Judd's place with a bullet hole in his head. We could at least get Shiloh well. I'm going to pay Doc Murphy's bill. I promise you that. I'll get all my canned money for the next three years. I'll deliver to the county. I'll deliver the county paper, too, if I, if I get a chance. Honest, I promise. Dad studies me. You can keep him here until he's well. That's all. Then we're taking him back to Judd. And he goes to the house. My heart is pounding again. Thump it, thump. Thump it, thump. There's still time, I'm thinking. Shiloh's still alive, and I ain't licked yet.